Today's tough question, Tennessee, what is their most memorable win against a number one team? And we can go any sport. So we can go football. We can go way back to LSU in 1959, as Caleb pointed out to me earlier this morning. Uh, We can go basketball, the whole nine yards. So you list them off, the ones that you think – and our message board posters can take part. We want them to do that. But you list them off, the ones that you think should be most considered, Caleb, and then I'll give you my input because I've got one that that stands out that is probably going to be a runner-up in my mind, but uh, it's a, a closer runner-up than you might think. All right, so what do we got? Number one teams beating number one teams. Okay, so you mentioned the 1959 LSU one. That's Tennessee football's only win over an AP number one team in history. Um, LSU came into that game with Billy Cannon. I think they were on like they were defending national champs and were undefeated again. They had in Tennessee, they scored a late touchdown to make it 14 to 13, and they went for two. And Tennessee football had what's probably I think it's called the stop on a two point conversion where they stopped Billy Cannon short of. Uh, taking the go-ahead lead that was under Bowden Wyatt and they held on 14 to 13 that one is memorable but then it's forgettable because Tennessee lost its final three games that year the late 50s early 60s Vols were really sliding under Bowden Wyatt after 56 um there in basketball I think the most there's two distinct number one wins before this year there have been three that we all remember in our life which was Gonzaga of 2018 um, and then Memphis in 2008 and Kansas of 2010. Those stand out because Tennessee, Memphis, then state rivalry in 2008, two versus one to see who was number one. It was just a great environment. And then Kansas in 2010, Tennessee had had a player dismissed from the team uh, the week before. The week before they had three other players suspended. They were starting walk-ons in that game, and Kansas was undefeated in number one. And Tennessee just shocked them. So those are the ones that stand out the most in terms of unanimous number ones. But I want to know where you're going with, Dave, because none of those stand out as my biggest, as what I think is the greatest win versus number one team. I'm going to save that. Okay. I think the Memphis, if we're talking about basketball, I think that was the one because I can't remember a Tennessee basketball game getting more pub headed into it. And oftentimes a Tennessee basketball game gets a lot of pub when they play at Kentucky. Why? Because it's Kentucky. But this was Tennessee and a non-conference school. I know it's in-state, but it wasn't Kentucky. And I just remember thinking the hype around that program, or sorry, around that game, felt like the hype around Tennessee's football program. To me, the, it was it was kind of like that. I'm not saying it's Tennessee, Florida in September in the, two, the 90s and 2000s. I'm not saying that, that it was that huge. But it, the hype around it felt like that. So... That Memphis game, as Smoky Mountain Red points out, was absolutely electric. So I would take that one. Um, and then I, I'm I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head. What was Alabama ranked last year? Yeah, you stole mine. That's where I was going. Yeah. Oh, is that where you were um, going? Yeah. So Alabama was you can't number beat that one. I Alabama mean. was number three in the AP poll, but they were number one in the coaches poll. Okay. So it's a half number one win, but that half number one win, I think, is. I, I think that's the best win Tennessee's ever had over a team ranked number one in any poll. I, I think that Alabama game was just the everything that, you know, I had to read, I I've done in the past. I've looked back on Tennessee's most legendary wins over Alabama. You got it, the 82 one that we all know the 95 one with Peyton Manning. I think last year's Alabama one may be the greatest, the most memorable Alabama win in Tennessee football history. I think it takes the cake and I, I don't know if there's, I can't argue with that. And across the board, if you want to say that that is the number one beating the number one of all time, the the best of of beating the number one, then you can't really argue with that. It had the drama. It had everything. Um, Alabama is clearly a a very good team. The the thing about that game, if they don't have a guy named Bryce Young, uh, that may be a two touchdown victory. That was the craziest part about that. My, uh, brother who and, and and dad who are both obviously hardcore vol fans they were watching and my brother was even admitting there at the time was like man you know you're getting frustrated you're rooting for tennessee but you can't help but appreciate the fight that bryce young put up in that game i mean i don't care who you were rooting for if you're watching that game bryce young was the best player on the field even though tennessee won and yeah i i, I agree and i know he's coming back 
from a lot of these uh, early on reviews of his, his size. And I don't know that he went to the senior bowl, but the, the word around that you, you read is he's even smaller in person than he looks on the screen. I don't care. I would take that guy. If you want a, a, a ultimate compliment, cause I'm a Cowboys fan. If you want to cut Dak Prescott right now and draft Bryce Young, I'm cool with that. You have to well, pay him a lot of cash, but intangibles matter. And I mean, you're right. Bryce Young just, I mean, there is a, there is a certain level of intangibles with him that I don't think you can, you can overlook. And that's, um, but, but you're right. I, I mean, that, that was so, what was so great about that game. It was so memorable though, because Alabama had the best player. They actually should have had the best defensive player, but the, st- the other story of the game was Darnell Wright doing his job on Will Anderson, which I think that nothing, nothing makes the case for Darnell Wright than what he did in that Alabama game. Um, it's funny. We're naming everybody, but Jalen Hyatt, who I think his five touchdowns, it's still like, okay, but it's, I, I feel like that was more hypo scheming and hooker throwing than actually Jay and Jay. I feel like anybody could have gotten those five touchdowns in that position. You talk about intangibles. I think Hinton hooker is going to be a huge pickup. I think he makes your team better in the NFL, even if he is a backup and holding a clipboard. Um, I, I think he makes your team better. I think he has the absolute most incredible intangibles. So we, we're agreeing then that we're taking the easy route out that, Beating number one in the coaches poll, Alabama last year was the biggest um, win for Tennessee over a number one ranked team. I don't know that we can really argue that. Yeah, I think that's the greatest one. And if we're sticking with basketball, we're probably agreeing with Memphis. The Kansas one is the most impressive upset in basketball because, again, Tennessee was starting a walk on in that game because they had four players suspended. Um, and Tyler Smith kicked off the team. And that happened a week before. And Kansas was undefeated at that time. And Tennessee beat him, and it was Skylar McBee. Just there was there was a beautiful three pointer he hit at a prayer um, late. So it's that's that's probably the, in terms of like what's the biggest upset over like the Tennessee ever had. That was the one that was like the like wow they actually pulled that off. We forgot one number one. Yeah, 1985 Tennessee Auburn. I, I can't believe I forgot that one. That was a Tony um, Robinson game. I thought they were two Travis. That's why I messed up and didn't throw that out there but we're talking about all-time wins against the number one team that got tony robinson on the front of sports illustrated yeah 38 to 20 it's it's really tennessee i would say that's that man good call by travis pointing it out that was tennessee's arrival game uh in, in under johnny majors because um the next week they were in the top 25 and stayed there the rest of the year it was the first season it was the beloved sugar Vols, obviously first year they won the sec first year they finished in the top 25 under majors they finished number four and yeah, that all I would say that Auburn game was. Would you say that was kind of the arrival of Tennessee football in the modern era that went over Auburn? 85? Yes. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. I thought it yeah. definitely was. Um, and, and yeah, I remember Tennessee being a more exciting thing after that game. Uh, it, you know, it just it it really cemented them as a program that was going to be talked about once again which you know it was earlier but what do you consider the modern era of football i say i mean when i say modern era i say post integration so 1967 to 70 ish post that um i say that it's when college it's like baseball you know you said you separate baseball between pre and post integration so i say integration is the modern era okay i guess i think modern era I think around the uh, the 90s, and it has nothing to do with integration. Here's why I think it, because really every game was on television at that point. So I feel like a lot of programs before that would use that as a recruiting tool. Tennessee would say, we're on TV eight times. So that to me meant it was a little bit more of a level playing field, but we're obviously talking about two very different things. 